Here we are in the Driest Castle, uh, also known as Drivast. It was one of the four uh, castles in the castle system that Skodra was the hub of. And, uh, and, and this was a, a very noble castle because the young men here were active in fighting the Turks as Skodra was being uh, besieged by the Turks. And uh, when the Turks could not get Skodra, they began to take some of the smaller castles. They started in Jabiak over the, over the lake, and then they came to Drisht. Unfortunately, the young men of Drisht were out trying to do guerrilla attacks against the Turkish soldiers, and so uh, the Turks were able to, uh, to defeat the, uh, the castle here at Drisht. Phenomenal view, phenomenal strategic location. Here we are on uh, one of the thick walls of the Driest Castle and uh, to my left in the background is the Skodra Lake, enormous lake and from that lake many of the Albanians from the villages around here would, would sail through the lake up into where the Turkish tent camps were preparing their siege on Skodra and many of the residents of Driest did the same thing. But you can also see, uh, as the lake uh, uh, kind of ends right behind me, you can see the mountains tapering down, and that's where Skodra was. And so from this vantage point, the people in the, in the Drisht castle could both hear and see the Turkish siege of Skodra, and that was their sound for help. Now, the uh, castles communicated with each other from a beacon system. Skodra was the center, so from here, I could see Skodra and I could communicate with Skodra. Skodra could see Jabiak Servonica, which was on the other side of the lake. And then uh, also we have Leja all the way to my right over there. And uh, all of these castles communicated with each other. They were trying to protect each other. And uh, in 1479, uh, finally, they all fell after, after long resistance to the Turks and after Venice ceded uh, the castle of, of Skodra to the Turks in exchange for peace.